Hello, and welcome to The Distillery. I'm your host, Harry Li Shanglun, and today we have special guest, Cecile Richard. Hi, Cecile, hey. how are you doing? I'm, I'm good. Um, I woke up this morning and I had some toast, and, uh, and then I was just doing some house chores. That sounds like a perfect day <laughs> in uh, lockdown, part two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how's, how's that been going for you? Uh, honestly, yeah, like Andy and I have been um, just kind of locking down since March. So it, it's kind of like a nothing has changed really type of situation where it's like, oh, okay, well, we're going back into uh, the same thing. It's still annoying, but, eh. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. <laughs> I guess if you if you've been treating it like one giant lockdown, then it, it sounds like you'll have structures and routines in place. Yeah, exactly. Or we try to anyway. Sometimes it's like sometimes I just zone out and play Animal Crossing for a whole day, and sometimes it doesn't feel that good. But oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cecile, you're uh, an illustrator and a game designer and somebody who has released a lot of different um, very cool projects that are sometimes playable, sometimes uh, holdable, sometimes viewable. Um, and you work a lot of the time in an engine called Bitsy. And so for those that don't know, can you tell us what Bitsy is? Um, Bitsy is this um, little game engine that works in a browser. And you can kind of like make a game or a little like story or a little like something, something small and maybe usually personal. And it has a lot of constraints, but I think that helps with creativity, um, especially on a small scale like that. Um, and yeah, it, it's made by this person, I think. I was going to say game developer, but I was like, does he develop games? But yeah, so, so it's made by this person called Mark Ledoux, and he's very, very cool. <laughs> and how, first of all, how did you um, get started with this tool, and, and why is it that you frequently use it so in your work? Um, I was introduced to Bitsy because I have a friend, Candle, who... Um, they also like they, they started making these games in BT. I was like, oh, what's this? And then I I was like, I was introduced to the tool and I was like, oh, this is easy to use. And like it was such a like easy way for me to kind of like combine my like like existing knowledge of illustration and kind of like condense it into these like small one bit like kind of interpretive, like interpretative, yeah. Um like like drawings and stuff. It's kind of like impressionistic. But yeah, um, that's kind of like the the gist of it is that like uh, I saw yeah my friend made made these games and I was like oh I want to make games like this and and it's and it turned out that it was really easy to make so yeah and you mentioned <laughs> think, like, previous oh yeah go on yeah no I, I was like thinking about like I think I got introduced to Bitsy and then maybe like a year later I finally made a game because like for the longest <laughs> time I was just like I don't know what to make I don't know what to make and then um and then I made Novena. <laughs> Honestly, that's better than me because I was introduced to Bitsy like years and years ago, and I still haven't made a, a game. So, mm. uh, um, and and you made Novena, um, which is an award-winning game that you can play online. Yeah, yeah, it's so cool. It was also my first ever game that I made. Um, so it's really kind of like rewarding to have that sort of like recognition and like also like the the really good like warm reaction that people had. Um, about it because I think it, it just felt like a nice push in the back push in the back that's a bad is that a bad thing I feel like in sports it's a bad thing to push in the back anyway um <laughs> pat on the back maybe? um pat on, yeah or like, like something like right a, a gentle or? a gentle push in the right direction yeah exactly not a not like a, not like that <laughs> um <laughs> it's like uh, yeah so like it kind of felt like a really nice like encouragement for like oh I, oh, I can make more games and I can be like I can become really good at this and like better. And and I feel like every game that I make is kind of like slightly better than the other. Like that's just my opinion. But like I think it's also like as a creator, it's kind of like what you strive for. You quite kind of try to like make something that is better every time. And it's like constant work on yourself that you do um through these things that you release. But yeah, that's yeah, that was good. <laughs> like it, on Nivena so was like the great yeah. It sounds like you um, were drawn to the tool because it was easy and you could um, use your existing skills in illustration to try to convey something. And you stuck yeah. with the tool because you, you encountered a lot of encouragement and support from existing communities uh, and were kind of invited to 
deepen your um, expertise in this skill. Uh, and, and you're saying that your work kind of evolved and, and is getting better and better as you continue to explore the affordances of it. Is yeah. That, um, yeah, that's a say? good way. Like, yeah. That's a good way to put it for sure. Like it's it's like uh, it's so interesting. Um, but yeah, like like I think yeah the the the, the main av like the main reason yeah why why I like started in the first place was yeah like because it was so so easy and I just didn't need to think about like coding or whatever and it was just all about like kind of like using the tool as it as it was and and like from there like I, as i made more games i was like oh what if i in incorporated this thing and that thing because like the the bitsy community is very good and like and and welcoming as well and 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 there's like this whole subsection like of of the community that just kind of like makes these hacks and and it's like ways of making like it's a little bit more complicated but as as I like started getting more comfortable with the tool, it kind of made sense for me to kind of make it a little bit more complicated for me as well. Um, and and I feel like every game that I make uses a new tool that I wasn't that familiar with. So like that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. So going to like the the subject matter in addition to the craft of using Bitsy, you mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that people frequently make quite personal experiences, um, and I know that your games have had autobiographical elements in them and they're also very poetic and there's a sense of deep almost like mystery or loss or peace mm -hmm. you know these kind of um poetics of experiencing of play uh can you tell us more about the process that you have um, going into that the process is like it's it's so interesting because like um so like i have a background um i'm i'm a graphic my 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 actual job is graphic designer but like um as a hobby i i made like comics and zines and stuff and um that sort of stuff like i feel like really informs like my my game making work where a lot of it is like it's it's all like sequential art and and it's very similar in that sense where where i just make these these little things these little stories that are like animated and um and the writing part is actually the hardest part for me because I'm like, at first I was like not really confident as a writer, and I was like, oh, I don't know, I don't know what I'm making, I don't want to, I don't know what I'm doing. And also, like English is not even my first language, so I was like, um, uh, but uh, you know, as as I wrote like Nirvana, which which is in itself like very much a poem with like a lot of repetition and like a lot of elements like that that I like, pretty like literary, I guess. Um, it's uh, it's just kind of like that one really came naturally to me. I was like, oh, okay, like I'm just gonna write this thing, and I was pretty much okay with it on first try. I think I edited it a little bit, but the the end product really didn't change that much, like compared to like my initial like um, intuition, intuition, my my like first like oh like idea that just clicked, and I was like, oh, okay, cool, this is what I'm making a game about, and and then it came came about like that, and and a lot of it is definitely inspired by like personal thoughts. Like usually, it's like not so much like I want to tell this story specifically, but more like, oh, these are like thoughts that have been like kind of circling around my head for like ages, like years. And and then I'm like, but what if I made something about it? And and then it would be like, sometimes like for Novena specifically, like that subject matter of like having, you know, like a friend who helps everyone but no one helps them that that kind of like concept has been kind of like in my head for like a long time and I, and I was like what if I made a comic about it and I was like eh, I don't really like I don't it doesn't really work making an illustration doesn't really work making like writing about it eh, I don't know like it's, it's not it doesn't convey enough like things and then I was like but what if I made a game about it and that was that was like really like what started it all I was like oh actually I can make something that is that kind of like encompasses so many things at the same time and because of the like interactive element it's it's even better like i'm not like a huge not not a, not that i'm not a huge fan but like i feel like the the like concept of like um like uh, I, I can't remember the word but like when you're in a game and it's like oh it's so realistic and it's so like, immersion? You feel like you're in that yeah yeah immersion yeah i i don't really like I don't really care for it, honestly. I'm just like, oh, okay, whatever. Like, I feel like that sort of stuff like comes from how you interact with the piece of art in the first place, and not so much about like how realistic the, the visuals are or like how 
you know, not even how relatable the story could be. I think it's more about like a diff, like a, all these different things that kind of like come together in a way that makes sense. And like, mm. I don't know, it's so interesting to me. But anyway, um, I think like uh, that that yeah. search for immersion and the putting it on a pedestal is really flawed. And like, yeah. it's almost hand in hand with that. Um, games have to be realistic through fidelity through mm. a, a one-to-one representation of their subject matter. And yeah. your games are really striking in that they kind of break that apart to the, you know, to the core. Yeah. I, I think you, you was the, used the word expressionist, which I really liked. Mm. Yeah, no, it's like, um, it's funny because like, it's it's like, even in my like most recent game, um, Under the, under a Star Called Sun, it's, it's like a sci-fi game. So like, obviously that's like kind of like a, an imaginative like universe, but then it calls back, it like kind of like transports you back into these very specific memories of specific like areas in Melbourne, very, very, very specific things. And like, kind of like recreating them in my own way, like in, in a way that is like pretty like, abstract while at the same time like referring to these very specific things and I think that kind of works in my favor as in like you know like it it kind of works so that um I don't know it, it gives it that like that uh, uniqueness um and without like compromising like you know the artistic the art direction <laughs> you know I don't know if that yeah, makes sense yeah yeah so you're you're, you're just trying to um this this new game of yours, uh, which is not playable, right? This is um, oh, under it is, a, yeah. a star called Sun. It is playable. Yeah, it is. It's oh, I haven't now. played it. Yeah, it Embarrassing. Yeah, no, it's no worries. You can you can play it later and cry. Oh, <laughs> everyone says and... they made it cry. They made it cry, and I'm like, fuck yeah! <laughs> like I'm just like, oh, it's <laughs> okay. It's okay. Um, and yeah, I was like, oh hell yeah! I love I love to make people cry. <laughs> um, That's the quote. Cecile Richard loves to make people cry. Loves to make people cry, <laughs> but not in a not in a bad way. <laughs> yeah, no, they it's beat really, him up, it, you know. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, push, I actually push have a, a, a YouTube comment, <laughs> Jock Cecile. Oh, I know who that is. I know who that is. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, yeah, no, it's so, it's so funny. So can you can you share a little bit about the because you mentioned this game has by uh, kind of real elements and and it's very specific local context live uh, in Melbourne uh, mm -hmm. and it has a sci-fi setting and it's very fictional. Um, yeah, what are your influences there and how did you? What's the effect of mashing them up? Um, oh man, this is like such a trip. Um, <laughs> it's not really, but it kind of feels like a trip. Um, so like I, I was, um, for this game, I was commissioned by, uh, by Liminal M Magazine, um, who are a publication in Australia who, um, just publish a whole lot of really good work by Asian, Asian Australian, um, artists and writers and, you know, like game makers like me. Um, and, uh, so like they, they asked me like, Hey, do you want to make a game for us? And I was like, yes. And, and then I was like, but what am I going to get, make a what, what am I like, what am I supposed to make a game about? And and it's like the theme kind of for like that, like entire collection was glitch. And I was like, hmm, glitch. I love that. Um, and this is kind of like really, really personal, but um, I was thinking, like I've been thinking about making a game for slash about this friend of mine who passed away last year and, and, you know, like they, they were always really, really supportive of my work and, and always really just enthusiastic about everything. And I, I really wish that I, that I had made a game for them while they were still, you know, alive, but this is the next best thing. And yeah. And, and then I was like, yeah, well, you know, like grief is like a pretty fucking, a pretty damn big glitch in the, in my life. So time to time to like write about it and try to like make sense of it and it's not so much like a you know i don't i i, I hate like i would not like to really say that it's like a, a cathartic experience but more like a way to kind of make sense of it and and be like well what do i want to what do i want to like express and like so like a lot of i think the ele the elements that are like more specific are like very much you know, like autobiographic, but not, but not like one for one. Like it's a weird way to like express this, but like 
some of it and and i think like i explore that with the with the glitch theme where it's like all these memories that i have they get corrupted every time they get corrupted every time i i think about them every time every time like every time you retell something you're not i don't think you're really retelling like the exact thing that happened and it's more like how you remember it and that's the glitch mm. and and like and that the game is kind of a, about that is it's about like how no matter how many times you re revisit it revisit these things it's like it's never it's never going to be the real thing but you know for what it's worth like that still that still matters and like that's that's what i'm expressing that's what i'm sharing it's not it's not what i what i lived but more like what i perceive and like and and by offering up i really like this idea of like you're you're offering up these these like memories to other people and now it's like it's not mine anymore and like this is kind of like how i felt when making like endless scroll and continental drift and honestly novena as well like all my games have this like thread of like essentially putting my memories and like my feelings and stuff into works and by the player becomes com not complicit but like it doesn't belong to me anymore because the it's funny because this this podcast is called distiller but i think like it's kind of like uh, it's like a distilled memory that people end up like you know like getting and and it's just yeah. kind of like become this like weird like it's really it's really funny oh man yeah i think uh, it's like I, different yeah. types of processes of distillation right like the thing that you're doing and expressing whether it's a process of grieving and inviting mm. people into your memories and thoughts and grief processes or expressing you know uh, moving and parts of your life and identities uh in continental drift like you're mm. you're inviting people to share something of yours and in doing so make it part of theirs as well and that kind yeah. of like is a nice distillation and then a gift yeah <laughs> exactly exactly it's like i because i i would not like to be like just this is my story and blah 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 you know like i feel like that's a little bit boring like um and i would rather like have it like framed in a way that is more like this is your story <laughs> like in, in a way like it's like it's like i think there's so much projection that like occurs like whenever you like consume any kind of media there's like there's always automatically so much projection that that like that the, the like consumer does and and the creator at, at one point the creator stops having like a little like as much control like the creator probably has more control on on the on the work when they're making it rather than like when it's like done you know like and and that's that's when it becomes like someone else's thing and and that's cool i really like that idea and like i've, I've been really like seeking to explore that stuff but anyway going back to like my process when making like um under a star called sun um Oh God, where was I? Uh, anyway, like, so, so like this idea of like making ve these very like specific things was probably kind of like, uh, I think like I had this idea of making a, a sci-fi game about grief. Like that was like, that was always going to be the case. And, and I think like my friend Mia, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I I asked her like to look over my script and and I was like, what do you think? I don't know if it, if this is good enough or something. And and she came up, she came back to me with all these like really cool like editing. And I was like, I love editing. I love being edited. It's great. I love editors. They make really good work. Uh, everyone should have an editor. But anyway, um, uh, it's, it was really. I wish cool I had an editor for like every time I opened my mouth. <laughs> That's the brain. <laughs> <laughs> my editor um, needs to be fired <laughs> sorry yeah, yeah. so, so no, mia came yeah. back to you and, and with this yeah and had all this like yeah. really good feedback and like and also like really like affirmative like you know like comments about like you know stuff that i probably like kind of maybe knew deep inside but like it's always nice to have someone else tell you like all these things like oh yeah like using like sci-fi as like a framing device for like something that is deeply personal like kind of like puts everyone on the on the same equal like ground where like everyone knows what sci-fi is everyone knows what what like a story about like being on a spaceship is like so like you you first start with this like complete like equal equal ish like like playing ground and then and then you introduce people in the in this environment that they know they're that they're familiar with so automatically it makes them 
you know, understand a little bit more than if it was just me saying like, here's a story about like me, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and it's, 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 it's a kind of like a fun way of, of, of putting it. And, and um, another thing uh, that is kind of cool about the, the game is that I use this symbolism of Atlas and that's Greek mythology. And um, it's so funny because uh, Mia was also like, you really need to like, Mia was like, oh, you need to, to like develop this even better. Like, you know, like have like a really good conclusion to this symbolism because it's interesting, it's good. And I was like, you're right. And then Mia was like, you should read this 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 novel. And I was like, oh, this novel? And, and, and she was like, it's really short. I was like, I love that. I love to hear that a novel is short. Um, and it's, um, oh God, uh, it's it's called Wait by Jeanette Winter Winterson. I think that's her name. I'm sorry if I'm butchering a name. Um, and it was really good. It was really good because like it, it has this like, it's like a, um, a, a retelling of of like um the myth of atlas and and it's like and it's got this really it's it's just so well written and I, I had a lot of fun reading it and and it's got and, it, and it's also like a thesis on like I guess like that sort of like authenticity that comes with like telling a story and I think that's very interesting and and so like the, the story ends it doesn't even that's it um it doesn't even like uh end at the like classic myth like end ending it's like no actually and and she she's like actually i'm gonna like end this in a different way and i'm like oh fuck yes and and like in my script i had written that like there's like two endings to my my game it doesn't really matter which i mean it only matters to when you play it or like however you you play it doesn't matter to me or to like the game at large which choice you take but the cho choice is that you you are writing this this letter who, to someone who's gone on this spaceship, and at the end you have the choice of sending the message or not sending it and deleting it. And if you send the message, Atlas um, walks away, and if you don't, Atlas stays and carries the world. And what so what was so exciting about the book was that I was reading it and I was like, oh man, there's going to be another ending, and and I, I was like flipping the pages, reading, and I was like, and at one point, Atlas walks away, and I was like, oh, wow, that's so cool! Like I was like, we had the same idea, and the, and it's got like the same kind of like you know, haha, wait, uh, you know, on the story where it's like actually you can walk away, like Atlas walks away, you know, like shifts the weight from his shoulders, looks looks, you know, turns back and looks, and he's like, oh, nothing happened it was fine it's fine to walk away because like at some point you've done you've done the work that you needed to do and it's fine and then i was like oh that's so amazing like i was just so excited that like you know i feel like a younger me would be so like a little bit upset that like i would my idea would not be like original or whatever but now mm. i'm like i love that like you know like someone that is really cool and that I respect like came to the same conclusion and I'm like that's amazing like humans yeah. they're amazing they, they all make art and we sometimes come to the con same conclusion and it feels really great and really validating and I, and that's when I, I knew when that's when I knew that's when I like thought oh this is it like I think I think I've got something and it really motivated me to like finish the game and like make it like something really good and I'm so 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 proud of like that that moment and and I think like me has been like super instrumental in the in my like making of the game um it was really good I love I love having like really good friends who like tell me to do things in a certain way <laughs> being like actually you should <laughs> maybe try this and like that sort of like collective Mm, feedback type of thing is like so 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 helpful for me as an artist like I feel like it's it's like always nice to have this kind of like community that cares for making your work more interesting I think that's so so good I love it it's great <laughs> I love all of that and also like clearly the passion and energy that goes into it as even as you're talking about it um yeah. just to draw some of the, that out so you're saying that uh, maybe seeing the same conclusion reached by this person that you respected um, made you feel connected to, to the broader um, art making capacity of human beings. And like, it actually is fulfilling to see 
that your thoughts are not necessarily the original out of the ether, but rather echoes or cyclical yeah. or like we can express truth together. And you connected that really nicely to the feeling of community support that you get, you know, this idea that you have friends that are encouraging your work and also actively shaping and changing the your processes. Yes. Is that exactly. a, a good way to put it? No, totally. I think that's that's amazing. Oh man, you're so good at this. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I have a tendency that's to go all around and be like, ah, ah, and then like you just kind of like put it like since that's so amazing, that's so satisfying. I love it. Um, yeah, no, it's it's oh, so you. good. <laughs> uh, actually, as you were talking about like sci-fi set on a ship with the with Atlas as a character, uh, I'm you know working on an escape room uh, set on a spaceship, and it has. A, a character called Atlas, which is really, Ooh, really funny. I love that. <laughs> I was like, what that's is good. what is this serendipity? What's going on? It's uh, great. I now, think it's like it's so funny, but I'm, I'm I'm really drawn to Atlas as a character in in the like myth. Um, and like to be to be clear, like um, in Under a Star Called Sun, like that's just symbolism, and it's not the actual character. The character doesn't have a name. You can call him Atlas if you want, whatever. Um, but like. Personally, I think like I'm so drawn to this myth because, and this is probably like a, a good way to kind of like put it like, like related back to Novena, where it's like, I like, I hate to say this, but I often feel like I'm carrying a lot of weight on my shoulders and everyone's stuff. And like, that's a like complex, right? That's called the Atlas complex. And I really, I'm so like interested in this, but like, I, I isn't like, it's, it's kind of a curse, <laughs> but mm. like, um, it's, it's all about like how, um, how you feel responsible for so many things. And it's like, I don't know, like, I just find that so compelling. And so like, uh, not relatable, I guess it is relatable, but yeah, it's yeah. like a lot of it it's is just resonate like, with a lot of people. Yeah, it definitely does. And, and I find that very, very interesting. And I feel like, especially, you know, like these days, it's not hard, like it's not hard to feel that way. Like it's it's like feels like a a zeitgeist type of thing where like everyone kind of feels really heavy <laughs> because yeah, everything's yeah, happening. Right. <laughs> yeah. And you know what a gift it is to create something that um, you know coming coming out of a place of grief and grieving and thinking about that weight, uh, helping people maybe come to terms with it or sharing that part with other people. Um, and you mentioned, you know, you love to make people cry. We have a comment from Nat uh, who said, I definitely feel that. Oh, sorry. That's the most recent one. That was complex. Oh. But also, I love to cry to Cecile's games, oh, which that's is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's such um, a beautiful function when like art lets us cry. Yeah, for sure. You know? I'm like a huge cry. I love to cry. Like, I, I think like ever since I was a kid, I've always cried a lot. And like, you know, my parents would be like, stop crying. And everyone would be like, stop crying. And I'd be like, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and like, I think it's like, you know, how, how like people who are like easily scared write the best horror. Like maybe it's like because I love to cry so much that I can make things that make other people cry. Is that a thing? Could that be yeah. the truth? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about couching it in like the maybe. Just like, yeah, that's the that's mm. the truth. What <laughs> if? <laughs> um, just to kind of close, I, I would love to ask a final question about, um, I guess, the zines because yes. you know we've been talking about Bitsy and we've been talking about a little bit about how your illustration work informed that. And you mentioned uh, somewhere in there that you know you're interested in games because they're able to hold and. Uh, invite people into participating in and and, and there's kind of like a, a lot to them but you also make zines that also have that feeling that's that they're really personal that they can tell stories um and i'm going to include actually touch melbourne mm, yeah. maybe like controversially in this idea of like a digital zine something yeah. that's yeah so, so, you know expresses those feelings in a vignettish style or invites people to to feel a particular context or story um yeah can you tell me about whether you see your work as zines like are your bitsy games zines as well and uh what attracts you to zines as a format um oh man that's so interesting i think like yeah, um, can be no. Way... <laughs> no 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 i i just find like it's like um so like the way that I feel about my like game making so far is that it feels like 
an extension to my comics work like to my it's all like sequential art and I feel like it's like a natural evolution of evolution like it's like a <laughs> like a, a, a yeah I, I feel like a, if, like not, extension is a better word because like evolution kind of like implies that comics are like inferior which is not true um and so like extension is it is it and like it's it's just like a way for me to flex a little bit more skills um and and like um but also like I think the parallel between like bitsy and zines is like very much felt even within the bitsy community where like it's like oh man is so zinish and it's true because like I think like what what really defines like zines as ob objects um uh, is that they are like traditionally they're like things that are easy to make and it doesn't cost any money or like it, it costs like very minimal amounts of money to make and it's easy to just like you know print a whole lot of them and you can you know give them give them away trade them away sell them whatever like and it's pretty easy like it kind of like bypasses the whole like publisher you know like like mm. all you need is a photocopier all you need yeah, yeah all you need is like these very small and, and like bit is like very similar in the sense that all you need is like a laptop you know like you, you don't need anything really fancy it's all about like you need like this little tool and and then like maybe like a pen and paper to write down your ideas and that's kind of it like yeah so i think that th those are like very very similar feelings and i feel like it's got that diy like i wouldn't say unpolished but definitely like that kind of like like no pressure type of thing like yeah you can make something super super like elaborate sometimes i do that <laughs> uh you can make a super elaborate make game in bitsy but you also don't have to and like i think that that's like a good which is why it's so accessible right and like zines are accessible as well and i think like those two are like extremely similar in that sense and yeah like yeah i think a lot of it has to do with like how how accessible like mm. they are yeah i don't know and i love that that brings us to, full yeah. circle to to your first question slash answer which is like you were drawn to bitsy because it was approachable mm, yeah uh, so that's nice uh cecile it's been such a pleasure to have you on and to talk about your work and crying and uh <laughs> we've got a little moniker for you in the comments oh uh, someone said that you are the junji ito of sad indie games which Damn. i think is a perfect title uh <laughs> <That's> so funny <laughs> yeah it's oh, boy. hilarious uh, thank <laughs> you for joining title. us on the distillery yes it was great. Um, I loved it. Um, I really, again, I really like how you keep like, like taking all the important parts of like my ramblings and put them in like a succinct thing. It's, it's amazing. I love it. It's like, you know, I think you do a little bit of editing actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe on maybe other, people for other people's only. words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why I need one for myself. Cause I, I don't know how to do it. Um, thank you. <laughs> Thanks Cecile. That's really lovely yeah, of you to say. It was great. Take care. Bye. Thanks everyone for tuning into The Distillery, uh, a show where I listen to people and try to edit them apparently. Uh, it's an online casual interview series and you can check out our other episodes on distillery.site. There, looking at um, past episodes and future guests as well as follow us on, follow us on Instagram at distillery.site and Twitter at distillery site for updates of our live shows. Uh, thanks, everyone, and do take care.